Hi, I'm Sarah Stevenson. I'm a producer director. I've worked in television for about 10 years now. I'm specialising in factual TV, so OBS Doc, Access Docs, Factual Entertainment. Um, I've done all sorts of shows. Most recently, I did a big prison series where we're shooting on two FS7s all around the world. Um, so I've been in. Um, you know, some, some interesting places, should we say that? Um, and the most recent thing I've done is actually with this camera, the PXW um, Z280, um, and I'm really excited about it. And the reason um, why I'm excited about it is because the filming is going to take me in some really sort of small spaces, all kinds of light, it's going to be day, night, tungsten, it's going to be a whole variety of things that I've got no idea what's going to happen, I can't predict it, you know, it's documentary, it's real life. And being able to take something this small in, that's this compact, where I've got everything I need on it, you know, it's, um, who wouldn't want that? The zoom on this camera is one of my favourite things about it. So you can go from your nice wide shot where you can see all the action, you've got your presenter in the middle telling you all about it, and you can also get into the really sort of fine detail. Um, so, you know, in the show I've been doing um, just now, you know, I've got my presenter talking about all of his worries and concerns about cockroaches, you know, mice infestation, rat infestation, and he goes, look at that, look at that sort of rat dropping, that cockroach there at the back of the fridge. You know, before with the big cameras, you know, you can't get down low, you can't sort of crash zoom in because you, you know, you've got a fixed lens on. But with this, you know, I've been able to go from him talking about it to being able to get underneath the fridge to the little tiny rat dropping or a baby German cockroach at the back. And um, that might not seem that exciting, but to me that, um, that has been great. What's been fantastic about this camera, particularly compared to the PXW200, um, is that um, you don't really see that noise. So when you're going up to, you know, before maybe about you get to about three or six um, dB and you, and you start to see that grain, actually you can go all the way up to about 18 on this and not really see anything. Um, which particularly in the filming I've been doing more, you know, anyone that films in sort of observational documentary where you have no idea what the light source is going to be like. So obviously with the four channels of sound that you've now got, um, what Sony have done which is fab, is they've actually put the four wheels down here, um, you know, external monitoring capability, which is amazing, you know, you haven't got to like go into any menus, it's not very user friendly. This is exactly what you need as a self-shooter to be able to adjust stuff on the go when you've got a presenter that's getting loud and bossy and it's shouting, you've got to be able to turn them down. Um, so being able to have access to this you know, straight away um, it's been fab really. Um, and what's also interesting is that gone are the days of having um, to change uh, you know, by where the XLRs are, of if it's um, you know, mic or line or plus 48, whatever it might be. It's all down here now, which is exactly sort of where it should be. You think, why did we never do this before? Um, fascinating um, that Sony have done with this is that they have made a 10-bit 422 camera in this size. So it's just like using an FS7 for me. I can shoot S-Log. You know, I can actually create those images that I need to take into the grade. You know, you can sort of um, play around with them just as, you know, we love to do on the FS7. Everyone loves filming with that for all the colours that you can get. Um, so it's got that option. But it's also got um, HLG, which you can use, and which is a hybrid log gamma, which is very much like S-Log, but you don't have to grade it. It's a bit geeky, but then it does mean that if you are sort of pressed for your budget, you can still get that sort of range and all those lovely colours that you often see um, only in S-Log, but with the HLG setting. Um, but like I've used it recently, it's also got SDR. So it really is a workhorse that can give you so many different options. Words in terms of the new age. that car, sorry. sorry. Very noisy one. I never hear idea. We're in this new age where a lot of... What is this camera bringing me that I've not had before? I think the biggest thing for me is that it's given me the possibility to film um, in very small spaces on the go. Um, with a fixed lens, I'm not having to change lenses, I'm not having to have a whole crew with me. You know, I can actually go out and um, just do what I love doing. You know, I can go out and be a self shooter, I can go out and film, um, you know, in situations where, where you can't be changing lenses, where you can't have a huge rig, where you can just, you're just there to get the content, you're just there to sort of pull out this information from the people you're filming. Um, and that is what I think is so special about this, it gives you all of that, it takes away the hassle that is so often associated with large sensor um, sort of cameras and things like that, but still gives you those incredible images. So iris versus, you know, variable ND or just ND as we've sort of had before, um, it sort of depends really. If I'm inside, then I'm probably only going to use my iris, but if I'm outside, 
um, I'm definitely putting some of that ND in, you know, I want to try and keep the camera around f4 if I can. Um, and using that, you know, variable ND um, just on the side here means that, you know, I don't change my depth of field, but I still get that image that I'm looking for. Um, and what is nice about this camera is that I can actually do all of that in shot, you know, in camera. You know, I haven't got to sort of use the clunky sort of like up and down three settings that you're probably used to, you know, like the PXW200 before. You know, I can actually sort of, you can slowly do the wheel just like it is with the Iris actually. You probably wouldn't know the difference if you saw the rushes back. Are you seeing the benefits if you're not shooting in 4K? I think you are. You know, the footage that I've been playing back, which I've been shooting at just HD, SDR, has been amazing. Um, and I think I've even noticed that it's like a shallower depth of field, you know, than I'm used to on a camera this size. Um, and that's been really lovely to see. This camera could definitely be a second camera on shoot with an FS7. You know, the footage looks totally comparable, which you never really had before in the edit from something this size. You know, it's the same codex, same user menu. It's, you know, it's even actually with an adapter. You don't have to use the S by S. You can switch to an XQD. So you can even be using the same media, which, you know, when you're on a shoot and you've only got sort of one DIT, it's really helpful. The current project I'm using the PXW280 on is actually filmed in lots of kitchens. Um, you know, it's going from like day to night, you know, from daylight to tungsten. Um, and this camera, it, you know, is performing so well in all of that. You know, it's given me that versatility, you know, to be able to dial in, you know, sort of the ND on the variable ND. It's, you know, we've got the iris, I can use it's all um, around here. It really has been. Um, it's been you know, a part of my arm, I suppose, for the last sort of week and as the shoot's going on, you know, I've been able to be really self-sufficient, which as a self-shooter for me um, is essential for the sort of filming that, you know, that we all end up doing where it's just you.